Hello guys, Sheriff here, continuing my GD script series. On the last video, we went over saving data. So for this episode, we'll go over different ways of getting input from the user. So let's get started. Okay, so there are a few ways to get input, such as from the keyboard and mouse, as well as from a controller and from mobile devices. You can create actions as well as use various built-in methods. We'll first start with actions. Actions are input mappings you create by going into the project settings, going to the input map, and then giving them a name such as left, right, and jump for instance. Then we can assign multiple keys to each action, such as for jumping, you could use both the spacebar on a keyboard or the A button on a controller. With those options set, we can now easily use a static class input to check if, if the action was just pressed or currently being pressed. There's many other useful functions such as creating an axis using the axis method that returns a float ranging from negative one to positive one, or you could use get vector that returns a vector 2, for instance, useful for directional input. The next way to get input in Godot is to use its built in functions. There are a handful of these found on different node types, so let's go over a few of them in order of execution. The first of these functions is the input function. They all pass an event variable, so let's print it out to see what it does. This returns the input type and everything associated with it. But if we want to check for specific inputs such as keys from the keyboard, we can first check if the event is a keyboard event using the input event key event. If it is, let's just print it up. We can also check for mouse input events using the input event mouse button and the input event mouse motion. Each event is an actual object that has their own variables. Keyboard events have a key code variable that returns what keys was pressed. And mouse motion has position, for instance, and relative position that shows how much it changed since the last frame. Like the input function, an unhandled input turns all the same events, but as the name suggests, these are events that were not used within the current scene. For example, if you were to check for a mouse button event here and you click on a button in the scene, whatever code you want to run here would not get called as it was already used by that button for its functionality. This is preferable to use for a character movement because you wouldn't have to implement a state for your game character when you're interacting with UI. Other mentions are unhandled key input that only returns keyboard and controller button input events and shortcut input that returns unused shortcut inputs. You can create sh shortcuts on any object that inherits the button class. We also have a GUI input function that only processes input from control nodes, such as moving the mouse over a label, doing that would trigger a mouse motion event just within the bounds of that label. Collision object nodes such as rigid body, static body, character body, and area 2D nodes, as well as their 3D counterparts, all have similar input functions where they only return events when they are overlapped by the mouse. It's called an input event function. For the 2D nodes, it returns the viewport the event took place in, as well as the event itself and the collision shape index of the object the event took place on. And for 3D nodes, it's a bit more complex. It returns a camera, the event, its world in vector tree position, as well as the normal of the collision point and the collision shape index. Super useful for grabbing and moving stuff around or selecting stuff in general. Keep in mind, you have to set the object to be ray pickable for the event to actually work. You can do it by checking it in the properties window of the node. Okay, last but not least is a uh, mobile input. So the input event functions also return mobile inputs such as touch events and drag events. Uh, there are there are other special case scenarios such as panning and gestures, but we'll just focus on the main ones most of us would use. These are the input event screen touch and the input event screen drag. The input event touch returns the amount of 
fingers currently touching the screen as well as the initial touch position and whether or not it was just pressed or released. A drag event returns the current position as well as the relative position since the last frame. Apart from screen touch and drag you can also get device sensors using the input class such as the accelerometer and the gyroscope if the device has them. I made a little project showing off some of these features. Okay and that's it. If you liked it please leave a like and subscribe. I wanted to try out a new format so let me know in the comments if you liked it or not and ways you think I could improve it. Thanks for watching and take care until the next video.